guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today I'm doing my audiobook wrap up. I'm gonna just repeat outfits from now on since I film these on the same day, so there's that. If you guys haven't watched it already, my reading wrap up was posted yesterday. I will link that down below in the comments so you can go and watch it. But these are all the books that I listened to for July. So first I'm going to start off with the mermaid books that I listened to in July since we're still doing mermaid marathon or it technically just ended. I will be doing a full mermaid marathon wrap up with all the books I read and listened to in one video with very short descriptions of what I thought of them since I've already kind of gone over them. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll post that once it's ready. And for now, I'm just gonna start out, I listened to three mermaidish audiobooks this month. And the first one was The Tale of Emily Winsnap. This is a middle grade mermaid series about a girl named Emily and mermaidy things occur. It is wonderful. When I went into it, I thought it was going to be, you know, juvenile and kiddish and fun and things like that. But it was fabulous. It honestly gave me somewhat Harry Potter vibes as far as like, you don't need to be a kid to enjoy this one. This one was narrated by Fenty Williams, who was just phenomenal. She has a beautiful English accent and the way that she reads these books is so enchanting and mesmerizing and just fantastic. It was so sweet. It was about friendship and about learning and about growing up and there was mermaid school so we got to go to mermaid school for a little bit which was really fun. It was just so different and they learn about like the different shipwrecks in their history and which sirens did what and it was just it was so fun and unique. Emily lives on a little boat with her mom who is scared of the water and there's just all these little mysteries that happen and it was just it was so great. I started collecting them to give to my niece because I need to share this with someone that's actually 12. But it doesn't matter what age you are, I think you can enjoy these no matter what. So I did continue on with Emily Winstep and the Monster in the Deep, which was equally beautiful and adorable and so cute and so fun and adventurous. And there's cruise shippy stuff in this one, which I love. I will definitely continue on with the series. I think there's like eight or nine books so far, but I just finished these two for this month. So I don't know if I will wait until next Mermaid Marathon or use them as like reading slump buffers, but they were so wonderful. I enjoyed them. I highly recommend them no matter what age you are. Then I listened to In Other Lands by Sarah Brees Renan, narrated by Matthew Lloyd Davies. <sighs> this is a huge book. The only downside to listening to this one on audio instead of physically reading it, I found this out when I was like looking for the chapter that I was on, is that you miss out on some narrations beautiful narrations for the different years of our character's life. So this one is told about our lead character, Elliot. I think he starts out being 12, maybe 14. This is a young adult book. You follow him through like out his growing up through like 18. And this is a coming of age story. Elliot goes through a lot of different things with his friends and it's a magical tale. So Elliot, when he's younger, winds up finding a wall, which only special people get to see. And it means that he gets to go to the other lands, which is a magical land filled with magic and fairies and mermaids and elves and harpies and all kinds of fun things and warriors. And they have to learn how to battle and they learn all of these cool things and he winds up going with this crazy lady to go to the other lands and his whole life changes around. He meets a girl named Serene who he thinks that he's in love with when he's very young and she has a friend named Luke that she meets and they're all 12 and they hang out together so it has kind of like a Harry Ron Hermione vibe to it which is awesome. Matthew Lloyd Davies also has an English accent and it was so great in this. This one though, it is a coming of age story so go into it knowing that it is like a journey through Elliot's life and it's not just like one plot with the climax and then you know we're going back down. It's, it's 
you know, up and down as we follow Elliot as he grows up, as he learns things. He comes from a not so loving home. His mother left him when he was younger and his dad just really doesn't care about him. So this world is complicated for him. He is very, very intelligent, but he is not good socially. So most of the time people don't like him and that's kind of what he's used to, what he's comfortable with. He is very obnoxious, unlikable character, but he is one of, in this instance, a likable, unlikable character. I thought he was hilarious. So funny. He was constantly tormenting Luke because he didn't really like him, but he knew he had to be friends with him to be around Serene, the beautiful elven warrior. And he was constantly like calling him a loser. Get away from me, loser. You're such a loser. And I don't know why, but I just thought it was so hilarious and I loved it so much. And he does have to like go home during the summertime and come back. And so it did kind of very smallly had a Harry Potter vibe to it, but this was a really special book. It has a lot about exploring um, sexuality in it and right and wrong. The Serene, the elven warrior in here is so awesome because her elven culture is completely flipped from our culture today. So the women are the ones that are like in control and in charge and the way that she explains it when she's confused about why it's not the same in the other lands is so hilarious. She's constantly talking about how they found a baby one day and she's like screaming for Luke to take care of it because of his sensitive manly emotions as he's a man and in her culture she's like women don't take care of the babies in my culture. Why would we take care of the babies when we go through the excruciating process of labor? You mean in your culture we have to then raise the child as well? And Elliot's constantly like, well, you know, that does make sense. And it's so funny, but it also explores how we need to just kind of all be more equal rather than having one gender better than the other. And oh, it was so good. It was so good. I love Serene so much. I just thought it was really fun and whimsical, magical, and just fabulous. I loved it. Then I read Sisterhood Everlasting by Anne Brashares, not a mermaid book, and I almost DNF'd it. It almost happened. My first DNF of the year. I technically did DNF it for about two weeks. So I'm listening to this one. This is narrated by Angela Gothels, who is fabulous and narrated all the other Sisterhood books. So the other Sisterhood books are Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. They're all YA. This is the adult um, fifth book that comes when they're like in their mid twenties. I was so excited to go into it. So it explores all four of our girls in their later years. And I got so mad. Something happens very early on in this book and it made me violently angry and it made me sad and I just, I not in a good way and I couldn't listen to it anymore so I needed a break. So I listened to about three hours and I was like, I'm just done. I'm just gonna just unhaul it and just call it a day. And then I don't know why, something was bugging me. Like I was not, I was wondering if I was kind of off about what was happening. So I wound up and I was like, I'll just listen to a little bit every day instead of plowing through it. And I wound up doing that. And what I thought was happening wasn't exactly happening, but it still wasn't a lot better. But I was so mad the first time that I quit listening to this that I was going to, it made me not like the rest of the series. I was actually gonna unhaul the entire Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants because it ruined the other books for me. That has changed. I don't feel the need to do that anymore. But the whole plot of this book was just really upsetting to me, especially like, uh, I don't know. I love her writing style and I loved following the girls and seeing like where they were when they were older and there were some beautiful moments in here about things that happened, but a lot of the reason I don't read a lot of adult contemporary is because of the subject matter and this is one of those cases where I just really didn't like where it went. I did wind up liking it like overall I think I gave it a 3.5 purely because her writing is beautiful and it was fun to follow the other girls and I got the point but it was just kind of too sad for me in a way that I didn't enjoy. Um, I do like sad books and that's fine. It doesn't have to have a perfectly happy ending. I just didn't like the plot of the book basically from the beginning. So let me know if you guys feel the same way or not or if I'm being overly sensitive, but this one was a rough one for me. Then I listened to Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. This one is narrated by Rebecca Solaire. That was one of the reasons that I grabbed it was that Rebecca Solaire, who's my favorite female narrator, narrated and I've just been like slowly checking her books off. Plus I did own this one. Now with this one, <laughs> I wish I would have read it because 
This one is told about Jane whose parents have died and she lives with her aunt and then her aunt dies when she is older and she winds up um, getting asked by a by a somewhat friend in her school to come to their mansion on a private island to stay for like the summer or something like that. This is told in modern times. And she's been told by her aunt before she passed away that if she ever got invited to this mansion that she had to say yes. So she goes and she makes umbrellas and so she takes all of her umbrellas with her and she's a very quirky character. She's artistic. She's still kind of mourning the loss of her aunt. Um, she goes and there's just all these crazy characters. The, the whole mansion is filled with like servants and the owners of the mansion and all that stuff and they're all crazy and they like collect art and there's all this mystery and intrigue and all of these things happening. So I read the <laughs> the inside. It talks about how our choices affect the outcome of our lives and like little things can change our future. So it's a, it, Jane has like five choices to choose from. What I missed from the book that I didn't understand on audiobook is that there are five sections where we kind of like kind of start the day over or Jane gets to choose again at a certain point. This is incredibly hard to explain. And when you have it like this, and then we have like the same sentence over and over again through all those little sections, I would have noticed. But because I was listening to an audiobook, I didn't know that was happening. So we're, you know, about two hours into the audiobook and all of the mysteries are coming to a close and getting solved. And I'm like, this is weird. Why is this happening? And then I keep listening. And then I notice her talking to someone that wound up being kind of a bad guy, I thought. And I'm like, why is she just talking to that person like they're not a big deal? And it's because we are starting over each little section. And because of that, I thought that the audiobook was jumbled up or I skipped ahead or whatever. And I got really lost and confused. That might be why this one has a lower rating on Goodreads. I think that this actually might be a genius book and we're just not realizing it because it's one of those books that you really need to like think about and take in. But it was really fun and interesting and I couldn't stop listening to it, but I was very confused because I didn't know what was happening for a little bit. So this is definitely one to pick up and read because I still don't know how I feel about it, but I think that I really liked it. Um, as it sits right now, I'm like between a 3.5 and a 4, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to try it again. Let me know if you guys listened to it or have read it and how you felt about it because I was kind of lost, but I think it was my own fault. <laughs> then I listened to The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot because this one is narrated by Anne Hathaway who plays... Mia Thermopolis from this book in the movie and that's what I grew up with as a teenager. I did not grow up with these books. I don't know why. I don't think I knew that they were books. I think I would have loved these as a teenager. There's like a it's like a 14 book series. It's told in actual diary format which the movie of course was not so I was not quite expecting that even though I should have. So it's like, Dear Diary, Tuesday, September 24th, blah, 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 the entire time. That kind of threw me off just for a minute because I haven't read a book that way yet and I wasn't used to it. Um, and it's told from a 14 year old's perspective. It's written more juvenile and I feel bad saying that because I loved Emily Winstap and I did not feel that way about that book. But this one is written like a teenager -y, teeny bopper type of book. So it's like, oh my God, I can't believe she said that to me or, and oh my god, I wish he totally loves me. And sometimes I love that, but this one for it took me a little bit to get into it. I really did enjoy it, enjoy it overall because of sentimental reasons. I have since carried on to um, start the second audiobook, which you'll hear about in my August wrap up. This is one I would skip if you haven't um, don't have a sentimental value around it. But it was really good for me while I was working and stuff because it was just easy to listen to and not have to miss anything like I did with Jane Unlimited. Okay, you guys, that is all for my audiobook wrap up for the month of July. I hope you guys had a great month. Let me know if you listen to any good audiobooks down below because I'm always looking for new stuff. And I'll see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!